The cross-thread cowboy. What did you cross-thread now? Well, Gerald, I was changing the spark plug and I put a new one in, but it wouldn't tighten down. It just kept spinning. So a buddy of mine said, the engine's junk. There's nothing I can do. Poppycock! All you gotta do is put new treads in it. Really? How are you gonna do that? What, do you got some magic thread making shame? I sure do. It's called a helicoil kit. A what? Helicopter kit? No! It's not a helicopter kit. It's called a helicoil kit. And what it does is it replaces stripped out treads. Well, this fancy machine sounds expensive. How does it work? Well, come back here, cross thread cowboy, and I'll show you. <laughs> Throw it up on the bench. All right, Daryl. There we go. Woohoo! I'm excited. Yeehaw! Woo! Pterodactyl here. Today's how to is going to be on Healy coils. And Healy coils are installing stripped out threads. We're going to put new threads in, put it back to the original size. And they make kits. Healy Coil makes different kits. Now these are kits for spark plug thread. This is a 10 millimeter for like motorcycles. And the kit comes with a special tap and an insert tool. And then they usually give you at least four different sets of Healy coils, and the difference is the length of the Healy coil. Half inch reach. These are half inch reach. So they make them in all different lengths. And then if you notice, in the lid, it has the part numbers for the inserts and the piloted tap and the insert tool. But most lawnmowers have a 14 millimeter spark plug. And the same thing, it comes with a kit that has different length Healy coils, depending on how thick or how long of a thread reach you have. So you have to determine what length you want to use. Comes with the insert tool and a special tap, piloted, they call it a piloted tap because this part of the tap is the original 14 millimeter and then when you start to thread it in and when you get to here it opens it up to the bigger size to accept the Healy coil which brings it back to the original 14 millimeter. And again, this kit has got all the part numbers so you can buy the different inserts, the piloting tab, and the insert tool. And this has got all the different, you know, the 3 8 long, 7 16 long, half inch, 3 quarter, and so on. That's the length of the Healy coil itself. Now there's another company that makes a spark plug repair tool, but I don't like this one. I bought it and I didn't like it. And the way it works is it's got a tap, special tap, and thread chaser, and an insert tool, but this is the insert it uses. So it opens up the treads, then you screw this insert in, and then the spark plug screws into that insert. But the only problem I found with this is sometimes when you go to take the spark plug out, the insert comes out with it. Not usually right away, you know, over time. And then you gotta remember to take the insert back off and screw it back into the head and then put the plug in. I don't like this, this type. So I don't use this one, but I, I bought it and I still have it. But I don't like it. And they also make individual kits. 
that come in standard and metric. So you can buy just an individual kit to repair just a certain size that you want to do. So you don't have to buy a whole kit. Now this is a different company called Permacoil. And this is Helicoil brand. So they're different brands, they all do the same thing and the prices are all different when you go to buy them. And then Helicoil also makes kits with an assortment of standard and metric like if you wanted to cover a bunch, but I usually just buy them individually on the ones that I would just need, that I see a lot of. I'm like, okay, well, all right, I'm seeing a lot of these uh, eight millimeters that are stripped out, so let me get one of them kits so I got one on hand. But you can go on their website, and they got a whole, a whole list of all the different kits they make and all the different tools and so you might want to check that out so you can see maybe you might want to buy a big kit maybe you just want to buy them individually and a lot of times you can buy these at auto parts stores that's where i got mine was from an auto parts store these individual kits a good auto parts store gotta to go to like napa i don't know if advance or or uh, autozone or o'reilly's or any of them i don't know if they have them but I've gotten a few of these kits from Napa, and then there's another uh, auto parts store, a local auto parts store that's not a chain store that I get these from. Now on these individual kits, you can see what it consists of. The Healy coil itself, that's the insert tool, and a special tap that opens it up. And on the back of this particular kit, it tells you what drill size to use. Because you're going to have to drill the hole bigger to accept the oversized tap. So a lot of times what I do is I'll take one of the, like this drill bit here, this size, 2564s. I'll get a 2564s drill bit and put it in the kit because they don't give you a drill bit with the kit. So that way when I go to do a, a Healy coil, I've got the drill bit in there. Now these are doubles of kits that I have. I have other kits, these same size, that have the drill bits in them already. But that's what I normally do. Get the drill bit size on the back, buy a separate drill bit, or look in my drill bit collection, find one, and stick it in with the kit. So now, when you go to do your spark plug hole, because of this tap is pretty long, you may have to remove the head because depending on where the hole is, it may not be right over where the piston is. So you're going to have to take the head off so this will thread in. Otherwise, you're going to thread this in and it's going to hit the deck of the engine. So you have to take a look at that and see. Sometimes you can get away with it. And I know some of you are thinking, well, well, Terrell, if I'm tapping in there with a tap, and it's going to create chips and then the chips are going to fall inside the motor. And then it's going to ruin the motor. So that's why you take grease. You get grease and you take the tap. See if you notice, this has got a lot of grease on it. You shove the tap in the grease and then when you're tapping, the chips will stick to the grease. And then that way when you take it out, you get most of the chips out of there. Sometimes there'll be a few chips hanging around in there. So what I normally do is then I get a Q-tip and try to get in there with the Q-tip and very carefully take the chips out. Now, if a couple of aluminum chips fall in there, it's not gonna ruin your engine. They're not gonna get caught on anything or do anything. Chances are they'll pass through the, the muffkin. 
So don't have to worry, you're not gonna ruin nothing if a couple chips get in there. Another thing you can do is bring the piston to the top, dead center, make sure both valves are closed and take some compressed air and blow it out. And you can get some of the chips out that way. Now, I've had a lot of chainsaws come in with the spark plug hole stripped out. So what do you do there? You're gonna rip the cylinder off and then thread it. You do the same thing. You dip this in the grease and you tap out the spark plug hole on the chainsaw because the piston ain't gonna be in the way because the hole is usually right over the top of the piston. Get it out, try to get as many of the chips out as you can with the Q-tip, bring the piston all the way to the top, blow some air in there. If a couple of chips find their way in there, you're not gonna ruin a chainsaw, trust me. I've done hundreds of them because other shops won't do it. Guy will take this to another shop and they'll go, no, we won't helicoil it because the chips are gonna get in there and it's gonna ruin it. I ain't gonna ruin nothing. They, they pass out. They, they pass through a couple little chips. I've been doing it for years. I've never had one come back. Now on this motor, I think we can get away with leaving the head on. So what you're gonna wanna do is get something so you can measure the depth. A screwdriver in your finger or if you got one of these scales, you can measure it with the scale and then you can take the tap and go, oh, okay, that's pretty, I can get in there pretty deep. And then another thing you're gonna wanna do is try to measure the threads so you know what insert to use. And again, you can use a scale or you can use a screwdriver or something that you could stick in there and kind of gauge it. And then you can measure that. And then say, okay, this is the insert I need. And then you can find the appropriate insert. So you don't put one that's too long in there. So this insert will work. Cause you gotta remember, when you thread this in, it's gonna spread out a little bit. So it's actually gonna be a little bit longer. So in the case of this one, it's a little shorter. So this one will work. And this one's 7 16th reach. So we packed up our our tap with grease. And another thing you gotta remember, he cross-threaded this. So there's probably already chips in there. And then I took the flashlight and I turned the blade and I made sure both valves were closed and the piston was at the top. And make sure you start it straight. Get it straight. Now a lot of times, the threads are completely gone. So the first part of the tap will just go right in. It'll just fly right in there. Because there's nothing in there to, to hold it. So you just tap it. So when I get to the part, the stepped part, you know, you might want to go back and forth to break the chips off. You just don't want to drive it all the way in. Keep going back and forth, and that'll break the chips off. And then we'll just go until it stops. Again, you can't do this always. Sometimes you got to take the head off. But on a flathead motor like this, that's not too difficult. They were already through. I could feel it. And we still haven't hit 
the top of the motor. See, now it's free. See? And there's your chips. 90% of them stuck in the grease. Now, if you notice, like I said, there's some boogers hanging in there. And that's where I get the, the Q-tip and snag them out of there. All right, now you can take your blower and a rag, put a rag over it. And blow the rest out. So now you're ready for your insert. Here's the insert tool. You gotta thread this on to here first. See, there's a notch. You gotta get that in that notch. And if you notice, this little tab here has got a little notch in it, right there. Because after we install this, we got to reach in there and grab this piece and break it off. So that's why that little notch is there, so you can snap this off. Now they make a tool. They actually make a tool for snapping this off, and I don't have one. Because I use just a pair of pliers. So you put the insert like that, then you slide the tube over, and now you gotta thread it. See, there's threads in here. So you thread it, and then what I do is I make it come out a little bit like that. So I usually just got a little bit of it sticking out, not much. Now if you went too far, say, and you're having a hard time getting it to start, just go all the way through, take that insert out and start over again. If you mess up and threaded it too far, because sometimes it'll be a little tricky to get it started and you don't want to force it because you'll damage the helicoil. Another thing, you know, if you damage the Healy coil, you can always grab that tang with a pair of pliers and you can rip it out and then just grab another insert and do it again. So see, I got it out just a little bit. See, now it, now it popped out, that's too far. So I gotta start over again. It's only on the spark plug one. The, when, you, when we do a hole, we're gonna do a hole here on this block. Those kits work a little different. They're, they're easier to install. But I like to get a little bit of a lead to help me get it started. You can turn the tube too to kind of help you get it started. And then just keep turning it until the tube comes off. Now you can see how much of the insert still has to go in. So now we can just crank it in. See, there's the end of the insert right here. There's the end of the insert. End of the insert's right here. So we're not all the way in yet. So we just want to turn it till we get the whole insert in. Now it's all the way in. Now you just back this out. Because if you use too long of an insert, you're gonna have three or four treads of the insert inside the head. So that's why it's important to figure out what insert you need. Lengthwise. And same with the standard ones, you can buy longer inserts. 
when we do the standard and I'll talk about that. So now we need to break that little tab off. See? And it snapped off. Now we got spark plug threads again. Good spark plug thread that you can tighten down tight. You don't have to worry about it. Now some guys that have uh, aluminum blocks will actually go in and Healy coil each one of these holes because it kind of makes it stronger because you know aluminum is soft or aluminium and it tends to if you're taking something apart a lot of times and putting it together a lot of times it weakens the treads you end up ripping them out so some guys will just go ahead and Healy coil all the screw holes because it makes it stronger with that stainless steel insert that insert is stainless steel and in the case of Say like head bolts are longer, so you have a lot more tread on a head bolt. So the insert may only cover a little bit of the bolt. Let me get a head bolt and I'll show you. So as you can see on this head bolt, this much tread is going into the block. And the insert, the standard insert's only about that long. Like I said, you can buy longer inserts. They make them up to one inch long. But say you don't have a one inch long one. And you want to cover, you know, this isn't enough thread for me. It may pull out again. So you could stack these. You can put one in, go down in there, break the tab off, and then stick another one on top of it. So that way you got two on there. You got them stacked. And that'll give you that'll give you the length you need. So you could stack them. Just make sure you leave a gap between them so it doesn't bind when you go to put it in there. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a Healy coil in this junk engine. Now this is a quarter 20 kit. Quarter inch, 20 threads per inch, quarter 20. This is the kit. And it says to use a 1764 drill bit. So we're gonna do this hole. Now the threads in here are good. We're just gonna drill them out. We're gonna act like these are stripped out. And that the cowboy stripped them out. So this is a through hole, so we can go all the way through. And then you get your tap, and tap it out. I got a set of tap sockets that I'm gonna use. These are nice to get, tap sockets. You can get them at auto parts store, good auto parts store that sells tools, or on the inner screen. Same with the Healy coil kits, you can buy them online too or again at a good auto parts store. And you're gonna wanna spray some lube on there a little bit, penetrating oil. Of course, you're gonna wanna go back and forth to break the chips off, depending on the size of the hole you're tapping. This is a little quarter 21. So it usually goes through pretty easy without having to go back and forth and break off the, the chips. But it does help to clear the chips out of the hole to periodically go back and forth. You don't want to break the tap off. And again, you can do this in steel, not just aluminum or aluminium. You stripped out something in steel, you can you can Healy coil the thread. So it just doesn't have to be aluminum. 
We're just uh, showing you on these. And you're gonna wanna blow out the hole. Make sure the threads are clean. Then again, this has got a square on it for a tap handle. Now we're in the quarter inch socket. See now, there's no insert tool for this one, but some of them do come with the insert tool. Let me see if I can find a kit. Here's one. Not all of them come with an insert uh, tool. Well, I mean, they all come with an insert tool, but some of them come with a different type of insert tool like we did on the spark plug. Some of them have a mini one like this, where you have to put the insert on here and then thread it into this and then stick it on there and install it. Some of them, not all of them. In the case of this, this kit, it didn't have one. So you just thread it on So it gets to that notch again. And then you just make sure you're, you're starting to straight. You just thread it in. Back it out. Now you gotta get in there and break off that little end. Now since this is a through hole, it might be able to grab it. Oh, it broke off. There it is. See, I was able to get it to break off. Depending on how deep the hole is or how many threads, if you screw the bolt in and it's not gonna hit that little tab at the end of it, you could just leave the tab on there. You don't have to break it off. That would be only if the bolt is gonna go past. Now we got threads again. So, that's all there is to repairing threads on uh, anything with a Healy coil. A lot of times you wanna put the threads back to the original size. I know some people strip something out, they go up to the next size. Well, now you got a bunch of quarter inch bolts and one 5 16 bolt on there. Maybe you wanna keep it clean and keep it all the same, all the same size. Or maybe you have to put it back to that size. Some people are like, well, I'll just smash a bunch of putty in there and drill it out and tap it. Because they say this putty, you can drill and tap it. Yeah, well, some of that putty works good and some of it don't. This is a lot stronger and a better way of doing it, Healy coil. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store. Buy our uh, Terrell apparel. Got our new shirts, Blade Man at Throttle. If you're a fan of them, buy them. And as always, there's your dinner. to find a cross thread cowboy and give him his mower back. All right, cross thread, it's all fixed. <laughs> Woo, all right. Woohoo! Yee hey, yeah. All right, let's see if she'll lick up. Well, it doesn't seem to be starting. It's been sitting behind my barn for about eight years. I figured. Just needs a new plug. I think that mower's got more problems than just a cross-treaded spark plug hole. <laughs>